What's up guys, Asian here again with another build video and today we're going to be talking about uh, DPS for CloudRest. Uh, so the CloudRest trial is a new trial um, that was released with Somerset. Uh, so you need to have Somerset in order to access the trial. Um, so this trial is the newest one and it's one of the more difficult trials in the game. Uh, it's very similar to Asylum where there's not that many mob pulls. You only have one mob pull before each of the four different bosses. Uh, now. Just like Asylum, you have multiple what we call side bosses or mini bosses, and then you have the main boss. Um, so in Asylum, you had uh, Lothus and Felms with the main with as the two side bosses, and Olms as the main boss. In Cloud Rest, you have Zamaja as the main boss, and then you have Gownway, Sororia, and um, Reliquent as your side bosses. And you can do any configuration, so much like you can do Asylum plus zero, plus one, plus two. Uh, in Cloud Rest, you can do plus zero, plus one, plus two, or plus three. Um, so that is kind of the gist of Cloud Rest. Now, a lot like Asylum, um, Cloud Rest generally favors magic DPS versus stamina DPS. Uh, so this particular build is going to be focused more on magic DPS. Um, so right now I'm on my Nightblade uh, on the PTS um, because I don't really play my DPS uh, a DPS in the Cloud Rest. Uh, when I run Cloud Rest, I tend to play tank. Um, so I'm on the PTS here today. Uh, so this is very specific to Nightblades, but I'll go over kind of what you should do if you are bringing something like a Sork, for example, or or a Magicka Templar or any other class. So starting things off here in terms of gear. Uh, so you, the gear pretty much stays exactly the same across um, all your various builds. So you're always going to use something like Sororia, either perfect or imperfect, and Mother Sorrow if you're a Nightblade or a Templar, um, or a Ma Burning Spellweave if you are a Dragonite, Sork, or Warden. Uh, Wardens can also use Mother Sorrow pretty well as well. Now for Monster Helms, you kind of have a few options here. So I have Zan on right now, um, but you can use any of the other Monster Helms that you typically would you wear uh, for Magic DPS. So that would include Lambrus, um, that would include um, Mob the Infernal if you're uh, a Sork. Uh, you can even use uh, Valken Scoria or Narayaneth. Um, those are all pretty good choices. Uh, Zan is obviously going to be the most powerful, but because the Majin moves around a lot, you might want to do something like Scoria instead, or Ma of the Infernal. It's kind of up to you which one uh, you prefer. Um, I know a lot of DPS that run, that I run Cloud Rest with, tend to run Scoria rather than Zan. Uh, so that's kind of where they fall uh, when it comes to Monster Helm sets. Uh, so you want to do something like Scoria with um, Scoria with Sororia and Burning Spellweave, or Mother Sorrow, depending on your specific class. So gear-wise, it's not that much different than what you would run in any o other sort of trial. Now, where it differs is in your skills. Um, so, for Cloud Rest, there is something called the Shadow World mechanic, where you have to go into basically a separate realm where you're separated from the rest of the group. Um, so, when this happens, normally in Zamaja, you send down one tank and two or three DPS, depending on how high your DPS is. Um, so, that means you're not having a healer. Now, some groups will send a healer down there, uh, other groups won't. But new most groups will not send the healer down, they'll instead keep the healers up top in the real world. So. Uh, you're going to want to have some form of self-heal and ideally some way of healing other people because you won't have the healer downstairs um, in most instances. So for example, as a Nightblade, uh, this is what I would use as a bar if I were to DPS uh, Cloud Rest. So I would have Impale, Funnel Health for the healing both to me and one other person. I have my Shield, Dampen Magic, Merciless Resolve, Inner Light, and Fiery Rage. Um, so I have my Siphoning Skill, Funnel Health, and I have my Destro Ability here, Fiery Rage. Now my back bar is where things get a little bit uh, different. So we have Elemental Drain, because again, you won't have a healer downstairs and your tank is going to be busy tanking the Shade of Zamaja, so he won't necessarily be able to put Elemental Drain um, on all the crystals down there. So it's important to have at least one person running Elemental Drain downstairs for the Major Breach as well as the Minor Magicka Steel. Um, it makes a really, really big difference when you're going downstairs, especially if you have a lot of Magicka DPS. And then you have block aid. Now, instead of twisting path, I have refreshing path because that is an additional heal. Doesn't do as much damage, but you're gonna want that heal downstairs. Um, so that's why I'm running refreshing, not twisting. And then siphoning attacks, challenge acceleration because the module moves around a lot. Trap is not necessarily the best option. Plus, you're gonna be sprinting around if you're in the shadow realm. And then for our ultimate, instead of um, Soul Harvest, we have Soul Siphon instead. Uh, the main reason why we're using Soul Siphon is because during Execute, Zamaja will place Baneful Mark on the main tank and five the five closest people to her. So you're going to want to heal yourself all the way back up to full in order to get rid of Baneful Mark. So Soul Siphon is a pretty strong healing ultimate. It also has a synergy that uh, allows you uh, whoever activates it to heal uh, for the amount of damage that they deal. Um, plus, you also gain Major Vitality, which increases your healing with Seed by 30% uh, while you are in that area. So, 
it's a pretty strong ultimate uh, to use um, so that's why we're using soul siphon for execute um, now obviously if you feel like you have enough healing already you can use soul harvest instead or if you're using master architect for example uh, as a instead of sororia you might want to use soul harvest instead but usually you'll be going soul siphon instead um, so kind of the general takeaway as a dps um, in cloud arrest is you want some form of self heal ideally it also heals somebody else and then you want a healing ultimate so for night blaze that would be soul siphon now if you are a sorcerer Obviously, you're gonna uh, pets are okay to use in cloud rest, uh, so you can go with the matriarch. You can go with the pet build, so you have the the uh, little scamp following you around. Uh, so obviously, matriarch would be the, the best option for Sork because it heals uh, two people. And then uh, for your healing ultimate, uh, you're gonna want to use something like absorption field. Uh, so absorption field is a morph of negate magic that heals instead of damages. So that's what you would use instead if I was your healing ultimate. Um, so you would pro you would use that instead of the storm atronach just because you do want the um, um, Destro ulti for cleaving down um, adds as well as a pretty strong burst. Now you could also swap out um, the Destro ulti so that way you keep the Atronach in case you want to give your allies major berserk. That's kind of up to you and what your raid lead calls for. Um, generally speaking uh, for things like um, Cloud Rest, just because you have a monstrosity that spawns after every Shadow Realm, Destro ulti is going to be a little bit better because uh, you're able to, at the very least, move it around a little bit, uh, and you'll be able to cleave down if, you if you're have if you doing plus one or plus two or plus three, you'll also be able to cleave down the mini boss as well, versus the Atro, which is pure single target, so that kind of uh, is the trade-off that you're making there. Uh, the most important thing as a Sorak is, again, you want to make sure you have your Destro, ult um, Destro ability on each bar. Uh, now for Magflowers, you obviously have the Magflower Healing Ultimate Remembrance, uh, so that's what you would use. In terms of healing, uh, you can always have Breath of Life, you can always just slot it and use it whenever you need. Um, or you can use um, the Clappy Heal, I forget what it's called, um, Hasty Ritual I believe is the base morph. Um, so that's another option that you could use, it's got a lot more expensive than um, Breath of Life though, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, and you could also use something like Ritual Retribution if you'd like, but that is a very limited field. In terms of Warden, you can use something like... Um, the, the Lotus Flower, I forget what the, the morph is called, uh, but it's in the Green Balance Tree. You can also use something like Leeching Vines or Enchanted Growth or Budding Seeds. Uh, so you can use basically any of the abilities um, under the Green Balance line as a Warden. Um, and then your Healing Ultimate is obviously going to be Trees. Now because you won't be able to use uh, a, the Bear Ultimate, I, most groups do not bring a Magical Warden because uh, non-pet Magical Warden uh, DPS is not quite up to snuff. Um, so it's a little bit harder to do very good DPS as a Magical Warden. And finally, for Mag Decays, you don't actually have any healing ultimates that are class ultimates, so your best ultimate to use would be something like um, Reviving Barrier instead. Uh, so that's the only ultimate that you can use. Um, and then in terms of healing, you can swap out Flames of Oblivion for something like Cauterize, or you can flop, swap out, um, uh, what's it called? Um, eruption for Cinderstorm. It's kind of up to you. Uh, it will be a DPS loss no matter what because n neither of those two morphs will do damage, cauterize, or Cinderstorm. Uh, but you do need that additional heal. Um, so if it were up to me, I'd probably swap out Flames of Oblivion for cauterize. It is a pretty good burst heal. It's not necessarily going to be as reliable as the Matriarch um, or Refreshing Path or Funnel Health, but it does uh, give you a little bit of a heal there as a Magicka DK. Um, typically speaking though, Magicka DKs will not be being sent be sent down because they are melee, uh, not ranged. And typically you send your ranged DPS down uh, before you send your melee DPS down because there's a lot of running around that you have to do. Uh, so that's kind of the general gist behind DPSing uh, Cloud Rest. So again, the kind of uh, what you want to have is just make sure you have your Destro ability on each bar so you always have block gain on one bar. So don't have to worry about that. So it's mainly your front bar you got to make sure to have that uh, Destruction Staff ultimate. Uh, either the, the ultimate or if you're using like Force Pulse that you're spammable or if you're going to be using Ellie Drain you can have that on the front bar here. So for example um, you could swap, um, swap these out like that. If you would like to do something like that, uh, and then you can use some, a different ultimate here, like Soul Harvest, if you would like. Um, it, it's you, so you have a couple of options here with each class. So it's all dependent on kind of your specific class and what sort of abilities you're able to use there. So for example, if you're running a Magplar, uh, you're probably going to have the Destro Ulti on the front bar there. If you're a Magsorc, again, it's probably going to end up being the Destro Ulti or Ellie Drain on your front bar, just because you don't have a lot of bar space as a Magsorc, especially if you're using uh, a pet build. So you only have three slots there, <coughs> and you're, if you're using something like Ellie Drain and Crystal Frags and Inner Light, that only leaves space for the Destro Ulti. So Mag Sorks will typically have the Destro Ulti on their front bar as their uh, Destruction Staff ability. Uh, Mag Flowers do have a little bit more flexibility because you can swap abilities back and forth. So for example, you could put um, 
if you're using something like Reflective Flight, you can put that on the back bar and instead put Elidre on the front bar. Uh, so you have that Destro ability up on the front bar. And it's a little bit more difficult for um, for Templars and Nightblades because you also need to make sure you have Assassination ability for the 10% additional crit damage as a Nightblade or uh, Atrix Spear ability as a Templar. Um, so for example, you would have something like Shards on the front bar and you would have Crescent Sweep on the back bar. Uh, so that's one way thing that you could do as a Templar. Again, it all is going to depend on how all your bars look like. Uh, a lot of groups are taking more Magicka Sorks and Magicka Nightblades, so you have something like one Sork for each group, and then you have Nightblades for the rest. Um, it's kind of up to each group there how you want to want to deal with it. So again, the most important thing is maintain your passives and make sure you have a self-heal. Uh, ideally, it's heal somebody else as well. Um, so that's basically how you want to approach DPSing as Cloud Rest. Now, there aren't really any super hard DPS checks. The only hard DPS check is downstairs. You have to kill all the crystals in order to get the orbs to spawn. So that acts as your DPS check. Um, however, if you're kind of failing to meet that with 2 DPS, you can always send down 3 DPS. Um, it's kind of up to you. You typically have 7 DPS when you're running Cloud Rest because you have 3 tanks, 2 healers. Uh, so you can send up to 4 in one group and 3 in the other if you want to send all your DPS down uh, in one go because you can't go uh, ap one after another. You'll have to alternate. Uh, so if worst comes to worst, you can send 3 and 4 or 4 and 3. Uh, so that's kind of how you can meet that DPS check of the Shadow Realm there. Uh, so even with when you're using something like Refreshing Path or you're using a Remembrance or a, or a Healing Ulti instead of Soul Harvest, you're still easily capable of doing more than enough DPS. Uh, I've, you've seen videos where I've done builds with off-meta um, off meta gear and, and you're still able to pull very good DPS, so it's kind of the same concept here. Um, you're still able to perfectly meet the DPS checks required uh, even if you are using different skills. So that's it for this build video, or rather build guide. If you guys have any questions or comments about any specific class or any specific build that you want to bring into CloudRest, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. I have run with both Stamina and Magicka groups uh, with all different sorts of classes in CloudRest, so I'll probably be able to answer your questions. Hope you guys found this video informative, and I will see you guys in the next dungeon.